Guys, it's been a little while since we've talked about a software update for Pixel devices, in this case, the Pixel Fold. But this morning in this video, we're going to be doing exactly that because rather surprisingly, we just got the first beta for QPR2. Of course, most of us, or a lot of us, we're still running the most recent beta for QPR1, the stable release of which is expected now to be launched at any time. Initially, December was sort of the uh, target for the release of that stable, but they've gone from QPR1 beta to the next quarterly platform release beta, which is typically you know early the following year. So we've moved from one beta to another with no stable release being released in between. Kind of strange. I expect the stable release to be very to come very, very soon. But at any rate, guys, that's neither here nor there. In this video, we're gonna look at some of the big changes in QPR 2 beta 1 on the Pixel Fold. So the first thing that I want to show you is something that I can't physically show you with my device because it's kind of a little bit hidden and it's something that Pixel users have been absolutely begging for for a very long time. Let's turn our attention to this post from Vishal Ramon on Threads. The Pixel Launcher is finally preparing to add a toggle that lets you hide the at-a-glance widget from your home screen. Once it's hidden, the space underneath is now open to other apps and widgets. This toggle is not yet visible in this beta, so they had to manually activate it. Of course, I'm not getting into exactly how they did that, but for those that don't know what we're talking about, this is the at-a-glance widget. It shows usually relatively useful and interesting things, but some people want to remove it. I would love to have the ability to turn that off, and so far, that's not something that we currently have, but this beta is apparently preparing that toggle. <laughs> Thank goodness we're going to be able to turn this thing off if you want to very, very soon. So one of the first things I personally noticed with my Pixel Fold after doing this is something regarding the taskbar. Let's go ahead and open up an application. And if we swipe up here to get our taskbar, the app drawer over here now does have a search icon in it. And now it does have a search bar at the top of that app drawer. That's gonna make it a little bit easier to kind of visually understand that there is a search inside your app drawer, find your apps more quickly uh, using that function. Now, another really nice sort of quality of life change comes with the screen recorder. Let's actually open threads back up and let's pull this down. We'll go to our screen recorder and it should not give us the option to, instead of recording the entire screen, we can record a single application. This is kind of similar to how the casting function works in your Chrome browser, where you can choose between casting your entire screen or casting just the web page that is currently open. And to go a step further, if we come to our casting option, which I should have here somewhere on the last page, if we go to screen cast, and let me just pick my shield, you can now see again, single app or entire screen, giving us more granular control over what we're recording and what we are casting. Pretty cool. So something we've had for a little while are these little privacy indicators that tell us if an application is using the camera or the microphone. You can see in the top right corner there. Now, if you click on that indicator, it's actually gonna give you this pop-up that's going to tell you that the camera is being used by the camera, the microphone's being used by whatever it might be. You can also close the app and then manage the permissions, the permissions right there in that pop-up. Another nice little quality of life change is found underneath your individual apps. So if you go into your apps and then let's say, let's go into threads. And if we scroll down and look for screen time today, they've actually added now in each app info, a little readout of how much time you've spent in each application in terms of screen time that might help you kind of quickly triage how often or how much you are using an app if you're not someone like me who a lot of the time just simply has the digital well-being you know, widget on screen to show you the most used apps. That's a cool way to see this as well. But maybe the biggest thing that was different about this version, this beta, was how quickly it installed. It still wasn't fast compared to other devices, but compared to Pixel devices, QPR 2 Beta 1 installed like radically faster. I don't know exactly what has changed under the hood, but I've I've seen other people commenting, telling me this as well, that their update installed much, much faster. So hopefully they've done some things 
to just speed up this process a whole lot more. Guys, I'm also going to drop a link in the description to Michelle Ramon on uh, threads because they posted a whole bunch of other changes. There's a ton of stuff with these betas that are happening in the background, but maybe isn't fully activated yet. And I'm not going to go over these things here because there's just nothing to show you or talk about. But Michelle has done something with that stuff that you can kind of read and maybe get a sneak peek at what might be coming in later versions of the beta. So do check out that link in the description down below, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have upgraded to this version of the beta. If you were already on the QPR1 beta, you will just continue on and you can install this. If you want to get out of this, I think what you can do is go to the beta page on your web browser, opt out, don't install the upgrade, and then if you wait until the stable release of QPR1 comes anytime between now and the end of the year, you should be able, I believe, to upgrade to that and then be out of the beta. So just keep that in mind, guys. I'll see you on the next one, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.